Good afternoon and welcome to the latest part of building the DJH 2MT260 kit and what we're going to do today is basically carry on what we've been doing for the past couple of programs which is further detailing the tender um, and we've got to the stage now where we can start thinking about adding white metal parts to the kit um, but what I've done, I've done a little bit of preparation off camera and that involved the buffers. Um, the buffers come cast, the buffer shanks and the buffer heads are cast in nickel silver and the bodies are cast in white metal and it is necessary when you cut the buffer heads off the um, the fret that they're on or the, the casting that they're on the um, you will need to re-thread the, the threads on the end for the retaining nuts and for that you'll need an M2 tap uh, sorry an M2 die uh, just to clean it up uh, I've got an M2 die having built a number of DJH kits um, uh, you you really need um, various taps and dies which they don't mention um, but an M2 die you will need for doing the buffers uh, and the other thing that I've done is that I've cleaned out the inside of the buffer shanks I uh, used a 3.2 millimeter drill by hand um, and use that to clean out any flash that's inside and then a 1.5 millimeter drill for the um, for the part to pass through that you can put a nut on it so that's the buffers and um, we'll solder the buffer shanks on shortly uh, I've prepared the um, this is the bunker front uh, which goes here this bit here so I've prepared this I've drilled out some holes in it 0.55 millimeter and what we'll do they're registration holes so what we'll do is we'll we'll solder this on we'll switch this onto the part here so it's like that if you can see there's the autofocus so we'll solder it on so it's like that and then what we'll do is we'll drill through the holes 0.55 again and we'll add cosmetic rivets so I've got a few rivets left from doing number two sun's coal tank um, I ordered 500 I've got about 100 left so we'll do that uh, we'll also fit the um, one set of the steam heat and vacuum pipe stands on the back we will also do the foot plate framing which is for the step which I've done this is the shoveling plate which I've cut off and cleaned up then we've got various um, there's a couple of hand wheels for the tender back uh, and there's also some plates which I've, I've you might be able to see them on this fret these ones I've drilled these through 0.85 and I'll do the same procedure with those that I'm going to do with the point five with the bunker top with the cupboard door uh, except I'm going to use 0.8 millimeter rivets so I'll clean that clean that up um, the other thing I'm going to need to do is that uh, with the best will in the world you'll get a little bit of solder where you shouldn't and for these part for these the step parts which are white metal castings they need to fit in the corner and I on one side it they fit but on the other side I've got a little bit of a, a meniscus of solder so what I'm going to do for that is I'm going to use I've got an old screwdriver and what I'll do is I'll sharpen that up using the Dremel
Okay, so that's not too bad. We just I will use that to get the solder out. Um, but I'll do that off camera. It's just uh, all you've got to do is just get in there and and well, no. I'll do I should have done this before I fitted the, the um, handrail, really, but I'll just do this before I reposition the camera. If you are in this situation and you do need to do this and you don't do it in the right order like I did, make sure you don't damage the handrail. Okay, so there we are, we'll just we'll just offer it up and see if it fits. And it fits a lot better than it did. So there's a little bit of an overhang. Hold on, where's the old focus gone? <laughs> can't find the autofocus there you go so there you can see you need to do two of those um, you need to do two of those but they need to fit snugly and it will need a bit of dressing down because the uh, shovel plate has got to go between that and this part so we'll do that shortly uh, we'll complete that I just need to tidy up the poor old handrail I don't want to take it off and have to redo it okay so what I'll do now is I will reposition the camera and we'll crack on with uh, fixing all these parts we'll still see how far we get see how long the batteries for the camera last and uh, we'll take it from there Okay, so first things first, we'll do the we'll do the the bunker front, and then we'll move on to the other white metal parts as as we get it. So this is the cupboard door which goes on here. So we'll tack solder this in place. When you do this make sure that you get it roughly central and level uh, you will need to um, look by eye sorry I'll zoom out a bit I've zoomed in slightly too much let's go out a bit so you can see what I'm doing so what I'm going to do first is I'm going to I'm going to tin the back of this So I'm tinning the back, normal 145 
screw solder that should make it easier to tack solder in place so that's nicely tinned and I'll just put a bit of flux on the part and When you do it, make sure it's level and roughly central. And then tack solder it in place. A <laughs> bit more flux. So it, it is roughly central, so I think that's good enough. And then we'll go run around. And we might have to resort to the gas burner again. Yep, we're going to have to resort to the gas burner for this. Hopefully we'll have enough gas. And there we have it. I've, I've, it's a little bit more solder than I normally put on, but uh, we can clean it up. It's relatively easy to get to. So we'll clean that up uh, when we've uh, put the rivets in um, and then take it from there. So the next thing that we're going to fit, we will fit the, the two valve faces, which are the square bits that I drilled which I can't find here they are so that's these parts so we'll just clean up the back of these So 
so they're okay we'll just cut these out these are not half edges so you can if you use wire cutters on half edges you'll distort them so we can take that out and clean it up And that's two and then what we'll do we'll fit these just check that that goes through yeah and much the same as we did with the other one we'll tin one side first done and we'll fit these by using the sharp end of a file because there's a hole in the bit and we just use that as a registration point so it should pass through both and no we're not going to fit these first The reason we're not going to fit these first is because they touch the top of this part and we've got to fit the shoveling plate so that needs fitting first but to fit this part you need these parts and they need a bit of dressing to get them to fit so if I can find the other one what we'll do is we'll go away and we're going to test the fit of these all I can say for the, these is whatever you favor for doing white metal I've used diamond coated drills because they don't clog and they need to fit between the foot plate and this part the support so I'll just go away and do that and then we'll come back Okay, so I've dressed these two white metal parts down and we're going to fit these two next. Um, and what I've done is I've tinned various parts around the uh, shovel plate support and we're going to fit these next white metal. So So we'll just put, put them in place, bit of flux, and then we'll so we'll try to be very careful with this because it's not they're not awfully big parts, and you could glue them on if you wanted to, but Solder is better. So we just that's not 
too bad. We'll do the other one. And there are the steps sold, stolen on. Now, what we'll do now is, with these need cutting off, it does say in the instructions that these need cutting off. And what we'll do is we will try a razor saw first. I'll just get my razor saw. Try the razor saw first. Let's see how that goes. So I'll start that side off. And I'll start this side off. And it appears to be working quite well. Yeah, that's worked quite well. Surprisingly well, in fact. shovel plate, the checker plate, if we can find out where we put it. Here it is. So this is the shoveling plate. Before you solder it up just look around and make sure that it is sort of reasonably level all the way around and what we'll do is we'll solder it at the front only because the back side of the doors are holding it on Okay. 
not too bad. We'll just put it down here. Support because you want don't want a huge gap. Turn the soldering on up a bit. Yes, rather strangely that's not taken very well so I'm going to take a little bit of a risk I'm going to use the gas torch because there's white metal bits involved and we want to be very very careful it might be just enough to warm it up the soldering iron now. Uh, I don't know if you caught all that, but um, that seemed to work. I was careful. This this one came out a little bit, the white metal part, but um, just a slight touch with the soldering iron has put it back. So now I'm going to turn the soldering iron back down to what I normally set it at. I did turn it up to 470 degrees because uh, mine goes up to 500 so which is an, always an advantage when you've got large bits that absorb heat so we've done that and now because we've got the uh, shoveling plate in we can now fit these parts the uh, because they've got something to sit on now let's see if they line up and they don't line up very well so what we do is we'll remove we we'll remove the thickness of the the uh, sanding wheel off the bottom 
and it should sit better. That's one. See what they look like. See if the holes line up. And the holes now line up, so that's good. We'll just dress it, we'll just clean this bit up. Right, I'll fit one and then I'll do the other one off camera because it's just re repetition. So we'll do a bit of flux on the back. And we'll probably have to resort to the gas torch for these again. So there's the first one in place, tax holding in place. I'll go away and do both of these off camera using the gas torch uh, and then I'll come back. Okay so welcome back and I have fitted and cleaned up the uh, three plates and I have also taken the bunker top and just check for a fit whatever you do with the bunker top don't force it it just wants to drop in nicely be seated where where the support is around it so that's not too that's not too bad we'll just take that take that out okay so the next thing to do is we are going to we're going to drill through the holes that we've uh, that we've put in these parts, and we're going to fit cosmetic brass rivets. Um, I've got a mixture. Of, I've got 0.8 and 0.5, like I mentioned before, uh, and there aren't that many. Um, brass parts still to fit on this there's the lamp irons which I will do after I've uh, after I've done the rivets they are a bit vulnerable or they're going to be a bit vulnerable so be careful about uh, when you do these you don't want to fit them and then knock them off or distort them while you do anything else then once we've done that we'll move on to the other white metal parts for this bit and then if we've got time, we'll do the um, axle boxes for this. And there, there, is two, there are two siphons for the tank for the water fillers, which need to go on this. Uh, and we'll do those as well if we've got time. So I'm going to go away. I'm going to drill these holes. These ones are 0.85 and these ones are 0.55. Uh, to take the brass rivets so I'll just go and do those uh, and then we'll fit the rivets and then I'll come back and show you all it is is just soldering um, there's nothing special in this it's just more soldering more of the same all you've got to do is just drill through the pilot holes that you've already made and then fit however many rivets there are so there's six six ten fourteen uh, there are 26 rivets of both kinds to fit 
So I'll just go away and do those and then I'll come back and show you when it's all done. Right, so I've fitted, fitted the rivets in the bunker and apart from cleaning up, uh, that bit of the bunker's finished. So what we'll do now is we'll move on and we'll do the lamp irons on the rear. There's four of those which are made up of two parts each and they are quite awkward to make because I've done these before. So what we need to do is we need to make sure that the holes in the back are 0.8 millimetre uh, and then fit them very carefully. Um, the other thing that I've done is the bunker. I've squared that up, got it to fit, cleaned it all out. So now all we're left with is a few white metal parts to fit on here which we will do after we've done the lamp irons. So I'll go away, cut all those out. I'll do one on camera and then I'll do the other three. Right, so we'll do one on camera. And as you know, probably the easiest thing to do when you have a kit of this nature is to drill the parts out while they're in the fret. So here's one lamp iron and the lamp iron consists of a short part which goes into the bunker and then a taller part that the lamp fits on. And what I've just done, the smaller part, which is by my thumb, that part, that part, I've drilled the hole in that 0.7 for the upright to go in. Now what we'll do, hopefully without losing it across the room, Boris, watch out where this goes. Right, so I've checked the holes uh, in the rear of the bunker are 0.8 uh, and they are. Uh, and what I need is my tweezers, which I'm probably sitting on. No, I'm not sitting on them. Uh, we'll get another pair. So it is a very tiny, delicate part. And we'll do the top one because it's easier to see. So, yeah, and that is the danger. And I am sitting on my tweezers. So I won't turn it over because it will fall out, but I've just sort of roughly put it in. And we're going to use a different technique this time. And what we will do is we will use a little bit of electrical solder because it's got a higher melting point. use a little bit of electrical solder this time. So I've tack soldered it and now I'm going to use uh, gas, gas again get it to run.
Of course you can remove any etching cusps off it before you solder it but as it's a small part it's probably easier to do it once it's soldered in place. Right, so there is the first part and we filled the hole in with solder so we'll just drill it out again 0.7 And we'll get the top piece. Again, Boris, watch where this one goes. There's the top part, and we'll just offer it up. Right, make sure it's all square and perpendicular before you commit to soldering it and then we'll use some low melt, lower melt solder this time. I just want the tiniest amount really. And there's the first lamp iron. So we'll go away, I'll go away, I'll do the other three, I'll come back and show you, and then we'll move on to the white metal parts. Okay, welcome back, and I've done the three lamp irons on the rear. They are a little bit coarse, but they are what's in the kit. Um, on reflection I might have gone out and bought, bought some cast ones to replace these but they are what they are. So the other thing that I've done is these are the hand wheels for the um, for the bunker front. Uh, I've measured those they're one millimeter um, but I'm not going to solder those. I'm going to I'm going to super glue I'm going to super glue them in because it's going to be virtually impossible to um, to get in and uh, uh, solder them. So we won't bother with soldering those. Another thing that we're going to do before we close it up, I'm going to just roughen up. the surface inside and now we'll start fitting the white metal parts to these bits so there are six parts six white metal parts that we need to fit to this um, two of them are quite big and the other four are not all that big so what I'll do is I'll I'll go and cut them out of the um, packaging uh, and then we'll discuss how we're going to fit them. 
uh, welcome back and what I've done is I've located the seven parts so this is this round piece uh, which looks a bit like a cylinder front but is not is the what is the relief dome base make sure that when you do it you don't get confused with uh, a cylinder front the cylinder front has got a relief valve cast into it this is the dome which fits over this I've cleaned it up a little bit it does sort of fit but not quite so we need to work on this part a little bit to make it fit don't reduce the size of this part because it's easier to hide this bit then we've got the tank filler which has got to have a couple of holes drilled in and then we've got four tank vents so those are the tank vents and what we'll do is they will fit using white metal solder um, but first what we've got to do is we've got to tin the areas that we are going to white metal solder so a bit of flux and we'll do the back and use the minimum amount of solder that you can so we'll just clean that off not quite there my soldering iron times out so that it doesn't wear if you don't use it for a little while it reduces goes into standby so So we're turning the area with 145. Uh, all you need is to tin it like you would a bit of wire. So just run your soldering iron over it and that should give you something for the white metal solder to adhere to. And same with the backs. So there's a nice convenient slot that they've uh, etched into the these parts just tin from the rear try not to add too much solder or your bunker plate won't fit Right, and that's all six places tinned. So we'll do this part first. Don't use too much white metal solder, otherwise, you'll never get the dome on top of it. Turn it back down to what I normally set it at. Right, 
my, my soldering is set up at 145 but I'm pretty used to doing white metal soldering if you're not very confident have it lower and then with the water filler make sure you get it the right way round so it's with the hinge towards the front and then make sure it's straight so we'll just tack solder it slightly and then check that it's straight yeah that looks okay so we'll go around with it Yeah, it's a little bit difficult getting in to do the last bit. <coughs> Try not to unsolder something that you've already put in place. okay so those are those two parts and we'll just do the tank vents so remember they position on the outside but solder them from the inside make sure they're upright when you solder them and it might help if you have asbestos fingers when you do this Yeah, make sure they're upright when you put them in.
Yeah, that one's not straight, so we'll try it with another one. Just do the last one, this one needs cleaning up. Because I made a mistake, I let it go. There we go. And there we have the four tank vents, white metal, and I've got a couple of burnt fingers, but hey. Right, so I'm gonna go away and I'm gonna work on this a bit to get it so that it fits over the other bit. Uh, and then I'll come back and then we'll fit this. And then that will be the last part. Um, I'm not gonna fit the, uh, The hat, the um, these, the control things yet, because um, they are a bit vulnerable. So I'll just go and I'll just go and do this. Uh, and okay, <laughs> I just had to change the battery. I've run the battery out in the camera, so I've just changed the battery, and I've also. I just bent the ladder. I've uh, fitted the dome. What I used, I used, uh, I used that. I cheated a bit. So a couple of whizzes round with that, got it to the right stage where I could fit it over. So apart from the these operating um, levers, which I'm going to put to one side for them for the moment the upper bit of the tender is is complete um I'll, I'll say it's complete there's one more tiny thing to do which we'll do quickly and that is we've got to put a handrail in the tank filler so we need some 0.5 millimeter wire and i've got some here so i don't even i don't need to get it out of the uh, the kit so, just 
get the other Dremel. Yep, excuse me a bit. I've because I've got up, all my stuff has moved around. I just need to to get the drills. I have a new drill set. There it is. So it's 0.5 millimetre wire. I'm going to drill the holes 0.55. because what we're going to do is we're going to tin the wire and use indirect heat to solder it in. There are two dimples on the tank filler. Oh. So I was a little bit lazy there. I should have used some um, some oil. Sorry about the sun. The sun's come out, uh, so it might be a little bit difficult to see. So we're going to 0.5 millimetre wire. Sorry, we have two greyhounds, the other ones come to see what's going on. So the other one is called Elsie. So if the if the camera falls over, it's because she's got a bit inquisitive. Right, that's slightly too wide. Else, mind the camera. Maybe this isn't 0.5 millimetre wire. Let's go and find some proper 0.5 millimetre wire. Because I know I've got some. I know what. Instead of faffing around, I'll just get it out.
it's amazing that you use the correct materials and of course it fits so that fits and what we'll do we'll we'll tin it So tin one four five. Clean your soldering iron, and then tin the end with seventy. And then we'll just put. A little bit of flux on the end. Hopefully without dropping it. There's the, the little staple which is on that. So this really is finished apart from this. Um, and I'm not going to put this on because um, I'm, I'm going to put it on after I wash it. And the other thing that I'm going to do is somewhere here in amongst all my junk here it is. Now this is a one and a half ounce fishing weight and what I'm going to do to give to give the tender a little bit of um, extra weight So it's a one and a half ounce fishing weight. So I'm going to fit it in in there using a hot glue gun. So it'll be inside. It will give it a little bit of extra weight. Um, sorry, there are two more parts that we, we need to fit on here. I forgot about those. And we'll do those quickly first before we... Um, pack up so we've got to find them these are the water siphons and I've left these to last because they'll be vulnerable
So we're going to add a little bit of extra detailing for these. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to drill out the back end of one of these castings. There are two flange parts on the side and we're going to drill out one of the back bits. So we started with 0.7. I'll just get the other bit and do that. So that's 0.7 and we will get 1.2 next. Maybe from another. That's 1.3. Well, the whole point of doing this is, and it's quite obvious if you see a photo of a real one, the water delivery pipes are quite prominent. Because this is basically an LMS tender, the uh, del water delivery pipes are different on this than they are on the BR locomotives. In the instead of going forward, they face to the rear, so they actually come out of the out of the filter boxes and they pass through the outside framing. It's much the same as all the other times, tin it with 145 and then you need to make sure that the holes you've drilled face backwards
when you put them on make sure they're parallel in all directions There's one hanging down, and we'll just do the other one quickly. And there we have both parts hanging down. Those are the these are the wood siphon parts. So we'll just check with the frame. We'll just get it the right way around. So it's that way around. Right. And that looks okay. I think that I'm sitting here, I'm just trying to decide whether to carry on or not. I think that as far as this program goes, that probably be enough. Uh, and we'll come back and finish the detailing another time over the weekend, probably. Um, I've only got to work tomorrow, so I've got Friday and Saturday free. And we can finish this, that off then so thank you for watching this latest part of building the djh 2mt260 and that's how far we've got this is substantially complete uh, and there's just a few parts still to put on uh, and then the tender will be finished so one more program on the tender uh, and it will be finished Thank you for watching.